Kwanzaa Well celebrates the milestone of Queen Elizabeth here in London. Prime Minister Chrissy Alton meeting with world leaders on investments for the Caribbean. I'm Clint Watson. The story's ahead in the Bahamas tonight. There are details about the court's written ruling in the Bahamar saga. And Customs and Immigration Officers address their overtime issue today. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Tourism expected to be a major feature highlighted at the 2015 Caribbean Investment Summit in London. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charisma Robinson. And I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. The nation's chief who led the region as CARICOM chairman for the first six months of the year, is expected to outline the successes and struggles CARICOM faces at that investment summit in London. But as we hear from Clint Watson, ahead of that event, the tourism minister focuses on how the Bahamas' record is expected to overshadow the Bahamar dilemma. A day ahead of his keynote address to potential investors in the Caribbean region, Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie is finalizing his presentation that the region is open and ready for business. The Bahamas will feature prominently in his presentation here in London. Tourism Minister the Honorable Obi Wilshkum says he'll convey that investor confidence in the Bahamas is high. What the Bahamas has today are good policies. Uh, we have uh, stability. Uh, we have... Um, legislative or parliamentary stability, democracy. We also have a um, um, law system that people certainly respect globally. So I think all the qualities reflect the opportunity for the Bahamas and they add up and the Bahamas could uh, certainly be a leader uh, in the world community of all the uh, opportunities that exist. And he won't shy away from the Bahamar issue, especially as it is the single largest investment in tourism in the region. Minister Wilscombe says it's not being viewed as a distraction nor negative issue. The brand and that brand uh, uh, is respected and I don't think it's going to be a distraction. It will serve as uh, obviously an opportunity to talk about even Bahama and the brands that it attracted. So it's how it's uh, dealt with, but I think the Prime Minister certainly will use the occasion to talk about uh, circumstances and situations uh, that make it positive to invest in the Bahamas. Expect the delegation to brag about the latest figures in tourism, which has shown improvement for the Bahamas. Uh, within the um, Americas, we're number 12. Within the CARICOM uh, community, English-speaking Caribbean, we are uh, number one. Uh, we're doing quite good uh, in the world community, we're number 58. So um, I think the Bahamas should be very proud. We have work to do. And um, if we're going to be on top of the list, you have to ensure you have the inventory, you have to ensure you have the airlift, and of course the product. As a sidebar, this comes at a time of celebration here in Great Britain and the Prime Minister is visiting. As you may be aware, the Queen Elizabeth is celebrating being the longest serving monarch here in Great Britain as a milestone achievement that everyone is celebrating. And it's happening right outside of her home here at Buckingham Palace. In London, Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. The Supreme Court yesterday rendered its written ruling on both the appointment and powers of third-party joint provisional liquidators in the matter of Bahamar. On behalf of Government Attorney General Senator the Honorable Allison Maynard Gibson welcomed the decision describing it as consistent with the country's national interest. In a statement, she says it provides a strong mechanism to protect the full value of investments by Bahamian creditors who, while putting the project in a position to deliver on its promise to generate jobs. Maynard Gibson says the decision provides a framework to secure a court-approved plan for the completion and timely opening of Bahamar. The ruling gives the provisional liquidator the power to take control of all bank accounts and other assets of Bahamar. Until a court-approved plan for the completion of the resort is established on November 2nd, the liquidator will retain financial control of the resort. According to the statement, every day the development remains shuttered, 
the assets of Bahama lose value. In tasking the joint provisional liquidator with preventing a further devaluation of those assets, the court signaled the urgency of a resolution. Noting this, the court empowered the joint liquidator to begin the talks aimed at resuming development with all parties, saying relaunching the project is critical to the protection of the value of the assets and all parties should reach toward this goal. According to the statement, government will fully cooperate with the joint provisional liquidator and encourages other parties to do the same. The Customs, Immigration and Allied Workers Union claims government has not lived up to a legally binding agreement and is now demanding that union members are given what's due to them. Cleopatra Murphy has details on why the union says the next move it makes will be based on the government's action or inaction. Bahamas Customs Immigration and Allied Workers Union officials say less than eight months after government signed an agreement with the union that prescribes overtime would be paid no later than the month after it has been earned, government has not been living up to its promises. This has prompted the union to file a trade dispute with the Department of Labor. In July 2015, the staff of both departments were paid for the month of March. They were promised that by the payday of August, they're going to receive April and May. Today being September 9th, they're still not paid. Union Executive Vice President Cordero Edgecombe says the agreement also covers a one-time payment of $2,650 to members relocated to other islands, in addition to covering rent and disturbance allowance for those away for more than three months, but those benefits have not been paid. We believe that this is a direct breach of the agreement that we have signed with the government and it also shows the government's ill intent to abide by an agreement. It almost seems as if the government simply signed the agreement just to hush the union up. We're not about signing documents, we're about productivity. Union President Sloan Smith says this is something they should not have to bring to the media, but union members must be paid their due. While not confirming industrial action, Smith says what comes next is contingent on government. I believe the government has the, and we believe the government has the capability. Prime Minister could say today, y'all cut them checks, solve that issue. Make sure at the end of every month, this, these people's funds are put there. All right, that should not even become an issue. My point is, it is being done with the allowance given to them. It's being done with other allowance given to the director and the controller. That's a routine thing. This is, like, should be second nature. The fact that we have to come to the nation over this, this is actually crazy. Smith says he intends to visit Grand Bahama on Thursday and consult with members on different islands before holding a general meeting, but the matter will be put to rest. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. We reached out to Minister of State for Finance, the Honorable Michael Alkides, for a response. He said that payments have been approved and funds provided. However, any delay in payments is an administrative issue and they will liaise with the Treasury to ensure that payments are made in a timely fashion. He says government regrets the delay. Well, yesterday we told you that noted attorney Wayne Monroe joined the Progressive Liberal Party with PLP officials saying his keen intellect, love of country and public service will serve both the party and country very well. Well, our Jared Hicks sat down with the Queen's Council today who says he's ready to serve. The 7th of September, Monday, I formally joined the Progressive Liberal Party. After standing for the DNA in the last general election, prominent attorney Wayne Monroe, Queen's Council, is joining forces with the Progressive Liberal Party. The decision came as a surprise to some, however, Monroe says it was a result of careful consideration. So I looked at the available parties, I looked at their philosophy, and I found that historically, philosophically, and in execution of its philosophy, the PLP is more suited to my view of where the Bahamas should be going. Monroe was quick to acknowledge that he represents many clients with cases against the government, including the Police Staff Association. However, he says that won't stop him from holding his new party's feet to the fire. I will continue to be in private practice. I will continue to represent individuals, and I have no doubt that some of them will be against the government. So, for instance, the police overtime case is still outstanding. I have certain instructions from the correctional officers at the prison. So it, this is joining a political party. 
Monroe's former party, the Democratic National Alliance, is led by his childhood friend, Mr. Brandon McCartney. And one might expect that he would tell McCartney he was leaving the DNA. Um, no, I didn't see that as necessary. Um, it's a matter, we were friends from a boy. This is a matter of choice of a political party. And I've chosen the, PL, the PLP. We also asked Monroe if he hopes to stand in the next general election. His reply was that more people in his generation need to be more concerned with serving their country than holding positions with big titles. From the newsroom, I'm Jared Higgs. This portion of the news is brought to you by the new Shell and Letter, designed for extra miles.